My name is Hannah Meyer. I am a graduate student pursuing a master's degree in library science at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. This summer, I have had the honor of working with my project mentor, Lynn Weinstein, in the Science, Technology, and Business Division on the project Adding Diversity to the Business History Record. In this project, I wrote entries for the Business Reference Sections This Month in Business History Research Guide. The entries feature an introduction to an important event or person in business history, as well as a variety of primary and secondary resources. These resources included first-hand accounts, newspapers, recordings of speeches, and nonfiction books. My task was to research and write entries that highlighted the contributions of historically marginalized groups to business. One of these entries was about the labor union, the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, which was the first predominantly African-American labor union. The union served porters who worked for the Pullman Company, the largest employer of African-American men at the time. Pullman porters were subjected to poor treatment, which included low wages that were meant to be supplemented with tips, long hours without sleep, and dehumanizing treatment by both the company and the passengers. This picture is of a Pullman porter in his uniform. Workers had to pay for their own uniforms, their own food on trips, and the shoe polish needed for shining passenger shoes. I also wrote an entry about the leader of that union, A. Philip Randolph. A. Philip Randolph was selected to be a leader of the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters because he did not work for the Pullman Company and could not be fired for unionizing, because he was known for being an advocate for workers' rights, and because he had his own radical newspaper called The Messenger, which made him an effective spokesperson for the movement. A. Philip Randolph was also a highly influential figure in civil rights. He was a co-organizer of the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom in 1963. This picture shows him and other civil rights leaders, including Martin Luther King Jr., meeting with President John F. Kennedy after the march. In addition, I wrote an entry about the International Ladies' Garment Workers' Union. This union was founded on June 3, 1900, and served workers in the clothing industry who were primarily young immigrant women. The union organized multiple strikes, including the uprising of 20,000 and the Great Revolt. Workers wanted to work fewer hours, receive better pay, and have safer working conditions. Conditions in the factory were unsafe, which could lead to events like the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire in which 146 workers died because many doors were locked and the ladders were not sufficiently high to allow workers on the top floors to escape. This picture is of strikers during the uprising of 20,000. Their signs show that they are from the Ladies' Tailors Union. The guys I made this summer will hopefully support and encourage additional research on labor rights and civil rights. Highlighting the important contributions of historically marginalized groups will expand opportunities for diverse audiences to engage with the library. Working as a junior fellow has given me the opportunity to hone my researching and writing skills. I've really enjoyed being able to work with the Library of Congress's incredible collection and learning more about A. Philip Randolph, the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, and the International Ladies' Garment Workers Union. Thank you.